today on the show, it's the Comic Book Girl 19 Guide to Superhero Comics Right Now, Volume 1, Part 1, Fuck You, Kirk is Back. It's going to be fast and furious, it's going to be willy-nilly, so hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. Today, we're going to talk about a whole mess of superhero books, and if you're looking to get into that genre, now's the perfect time, because Marvel Now is relaunching all these titles, and we're going to tell you about them. All New X-Men. Here's the scoop. Who are the All New X-Men? They're the original five X-Men from the 60s who have been brought forward in time by Beast in order to use them as psychological warfare against Cyclops, who in present time has become a mutant terrorist revolutionary in the eyes of the government following the events of AVX, where he was possessed by the Phoenix and killed Professor X. What a surprise. I really was not looking forward to this at all. I was like, they're bringing back Jean Grey, like that sucks. And I was totally wrong. This is fantastic. It's one of the most exciting new concepts going on in X-Men right now. Beast has brought back the original five members. Hopefully that the now Scott will see young idealistic Scott and shock him out of being a dick. It's totally interesting. It's totally messing up these kids. I, it, uh what would you see if like you were 16, you go to the future and this huge promise of what you're working towards and what you're trying to fight for in this dream of coexistence doesn't fucking work at all? Like, oh, by the way, your teacher dies, you die a lot, all your friends are gonna die, the place is totally depressing, and this weird creepy hairy dude with his claws coming out of his hands, yeah, he, he's trying to kill you right now. Fun. And one thing that I really like about All New X-Men is that it's made me really like Jean Grey for the first time. I've never really been a big fan of her. You hate Jean Grey. I know, but I feel like, I like the fact that in this, she's finally like not omnipotent anymore. No, it's it's good to see a Jean Grey who's grounded again. When we were reading Jean Grey before, she knew everything. She was kind of high and above everyone, and I like watching this insecure, really scared of the future, because now she's had a glimpse of it, a uh, version of her. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Uncanny X-Force, here's the scoop. X-Force is a superhero assassination squad. The last team just broke up and now a new team is coming together led by Psylocke along with Storm, Puck, Spiral, and a lady Phantom X named Cluster. Their main villain is supposed to be Bishop, but we don't know what the deal is with that yet. So first issue, new location for the team, downtown LA, very cool. And then sure enough, who shows up in the comic? Spiral. Oh my god, she's like this psychotropic drug dealing, like rave master in downtown LA. It's so cool. Spiral has the good drugs. And I will buy them from her at a rave downtown. <laughs> Guaranteed. And the best part is, at the end of the issue, Phantomix shows back up. Really quickly, he was a creation of Grant Morrison during that run of X-Men. So his central nervous system is alive, reclones him, but he had three brains. So he gets recloned each brain in a new body. There's the good version of him, the bad version of him, and then the female version of him. Guess what? Bad version takes off, and then he gets caught making out with the female version of himself. I love it. It's so Phantom X. That is so weird and Phantom X, and I approve all the way. Also, I'd just like to talk about Huck for a minute. He's talking to the most powerful women in the world, like Psylocke and Storm, and he's yeah. just like totally like a womanizer. And he's like, girl, you got legs taller than I am. He's just so funny. So it's great. He's womanizing the entire time in that bar. Can we get Peter Dinklage to play him in the movie if that ever happens, please? I hope so. We need okay. Peter Dinklage, your puck, it's done. All the time. And a panel I have to mention is this one right here. Mm. It shows from a bygone era, Spiral pulling out Psylocke's eyes, and she just looks so evil. She's like, ugh, ha, and look, it's so good. I love it. It's all part of the weird Mojoverse stuff. It's fantastic. Cable and the X-Force, here's the scoop. Cable, on the run and suffering from some sort of time travel dementia, leads a team comprised of Domino, Colossus, Forge, and Dr. Nemesis to stop his disastrous visions of the future that put him at odds with the Uncanny Avengers. Holy shit! <laughs> so Kirk, what did you think of Cable and the X-Force? Cable and the X-Force, it's fun. First of all, it's got Cable. He's got a lot of history. There's a lot of continuity involved with that character. So he's always a lot of fun to follow. Like, what's gonna be the next big step that we have to pile on in Cable's history? Uh, I also really do like the human drama aspect. I love when a good writer is writing a great father-daughter story. You know, like the daughter's pissed, it's Hope Summers, 
and she gets angry at dad, and then dad has to kind of like smooth things over. That's always fun to watch and read. Um, Dr. Nemesis is on the team. He's always my wild card for the X-Men. I love him. They brought Forge back. Again, really cool. And then, as always, because she's always Cable's right hand, Domino's back on the team. So it's got that flavor of the old school X-Force. It's a little darker in tone, not so much noir. They're not going for that. But it's a fun concept and it's a fun team, so I'm gonna stick with it. It hasn't grabbed me all the way, but it's gonna get its day in court with me. I'm gonna stick with it for a few months. So what's going on in this cover? This is the most exciting cover I've seen in a long time. The, oh, I've got a mutant migraine. <laughs> like, that shit's crazy. I bet you we should give him some Excedrin. Oh. Uncanny X-Men, here's the scoop. After the events of AVX, Cyclops, White Queen, Magneto, and Magic are considered terrorist fugitives. But that's not going to stop them from scooping up all the new mutants manifesting their powers for the first time in an effort to start their own mutant revolution. With Scott marching towards villainhood and an inside informer on the team working against him, this title is shaping up to be very interesting. What did you think of Uncanny X-Men, Kirk? What a really great setup for a first issue. I really don't know what to expect from it but that's kind of the point. Yeah. We're kind of going through the journey with Scott with if he is going to be a terrorist or not, or yeah. if he really does believe in this cause that he's going through. You right, know? right. It, like, is he bad? Is he not bad? But it like, raises the questions and we're kind of going to figure it out together. And I will say one thing that I hated was White Queen is wearing a black outfit? What? What? White Queen does not wear black? I didn't even know it was her for half the thing. Her hair is cut. It was like, I, ugh, ugh, I'm a costuming snob. I don't like Magneto wearing white either. And this is say it. He's no virgin. We know this. <laughs> I know. And I, you know, I will, I will deal with Scott in red, but that's it. Like... Wolverine and the X-Men. Here's the scoop. Wolverine broke from Cyclops and started his own school for teenage mutants called the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. This title focuses on these up and coming mutants as well as its X-Men teaching staff. It brings back the fun of the X titles from the 80s. It's got tons of great characters and tons of heart. It makes me laugh, it makes me cry. I buy it every friggin' month. And now we're gonna talk about the book you know that I love, Wolverine and the X-Men. It's so much fun. It really gets into like, not just crazy battles, but also like what they do like day to day and the little fun things that, and that's what really sells this for me. I love seeing their little, my, the minutia of their lives and one of the breakout stars that I love is Dupe. Dupe rules. He's this little character that no one, no one understands him except Wolverine. Wolverine's the only one that knows what he's saying. But he's the go-to guy. He handles business. We're still not quite sure what business that is, but they do this great thing in an issue where there was Frankenstein and a psychotic circus, and it wasn't the greatest storyline, but still better than anything else we're reading right now. They made this really great artistic choice to really highlight and celebrate Dupe in the gutters of one of the panels while there's all this story and all this fighting going on. You get to watch Dupe just destroy evil, psychotic, evil, magic clowns all in the panel. It, how cool is that? It's so awesome. It's great. Man, this issue, right her, did it for me. It brought it all back. I was like, I believe in this title. Like, this is so fantastic. It's all about the relationships that are going on right mm -hmm. now. Uh, first and foremost, we should talk about Wolverine and Storm. Storm is like talking to her ex, Black Panther, and he's like, just not him. Just don't fuck Wolverine. And she's like, check, like, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm sorry, you do the first thing your ex tells you not to do. It, and that's Wolverine. Oh, and the whole scene where she's like, I, you know, I need you to do me that favor, and he cuts her hair off into a mohawk with his claws. So good. Second of all, Kitty and Iceman have their first date. It's great because we're watching with all new X-Men and the original five there that everyone else grows up and they take on this responsibility. Bobby's still Bobby. Iceman's still Iceman. But we're watching Kitty and Iceman kind of like try to develop a relationship and they've kind of just accepted that like you're mutants and you're superheroes and it's never going to look normal. And how fun is that date where they just decide to go do extraordinary things on their date because they can. Yeah, they were trying to have a regular date and then they're like, what are we doing? And then they go like stop tornadoes and give ice to children in deserts and <laughs> all this weird stuff is fantastic. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite parts is Jean Grey and Quentin Quire having a moment together and talking and, and, and Quentin Quire's hitting on a 16 year old Jean Grey and it's so funny, I love it. In the comments section, 
I want to see how many people want to see that hookup happen. You know I do. You know I do. So one of my favorite highlight panels that I have to talk about was in also in this issue where all the <laughs> teachers, are they're going out on their teacher's night out and Wolverine has to stay behind and Warbird is like, there had better be coupling involved. Like, I was promised there would be indiscriminate coupling. And then I love the fact that Deathlock over here is like, this unit is serving as what is commonly referred to as the designated driver. I am told this is a role of great honor. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> God, it's so funny. Like, I love it. I love it. This video continues in part two. Click here right now. Somewhere in here. Click right here. Okay. So if you had a good time, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, like the Facebook page, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> I hate myself right now. You feel a little bad about that? I do. I feel a little, I feel like my soul was raped a little bit. I know. <laughs> Iron Man. Best thing about this series, it's still being written by Gillian. Again, the guy we are just talking about with Young Avengers. Best part is, if you're a new reader, this is perfect for you. Young Avengers, here's the scoop. This new book is about a team of teenage superheroes who have to wrestle with becoming adults as well as super villainry. They're an all new team